five, four, three, two, one. New York City, 2001. No tall building had ever collapsed primarily due to fire. But that's exactly what investigators believe happened to the 47-story World Trade Center Building 7 on September 11th. According to a three-year comprehensive building and fire safety investigation just completed by the National Institute of Standards and Technology, or NIST. World Trade Center 7 collapsed because of fires. We really have a new kind of progressive collapse that we have discovered here, which is a fire-induced progressive collapse. And in fact, we have shown for the first time that fire can induce a progressive collapse. NIST used detailed data describing the building and its contents to create the most complex computer simulation of a structure collapse ever made. Falling debris from Tower 1 started fires on 10 floors in Building 7. A break in the city water main from the collapse of the towers disabled sprinklers in the lower half of WTC-7, allowing fires on those floors to burn for seven hours. The NIST computer model was validated with evidence from videos, photos, witness accounts, Those witness accounts. and other data. It shows that heat from fires expanded long support beams, causing connections and floors to fail. Sail. No way. Not this time. We created it. Not this time. No. Not this time. It's totally made up. Pure fiction. It's fiction. It's fiction. Look at we made the, it up. Uh, floors it. failing here, and eventually this column 79 is going to buckle. It fails, and then the entire vertical progression takes place. The buckled column caused additional collapsed floors and falling debris that removed support from adjacent interior columns. A chain reaction then caused other interior columns to fail in quick succession. The outside shell of the building fell. 
the nis- And no evidence that explosives were involved in the collapse. This team found no evidence that explosives were involved in the collapse. And our analysis showed that even the smallest explosive charge that was capable of bringing down the critical column in the building, had it occurred, uh, we would have seen sound levels of 120 to 130 decibels about a half a mile away. That would have been an incredibly loud sound, and that sound was not picked up by any of the videos or witnesses that we have talked to. What happened? It was in the explosion. It was in the lobby and then fucking this, the third explosion, the whole lobby collapsed on us. What was it like? What was it like? Horrible. It's like Horrible. hell. You don't want to know. The whole building just collapsed on us inside the lobby. Was that a secondary explosion? Yes, it was. That was so the planet probably? Yeah, definitely a secondary explosion. But we was inside waiting to go upstairs. And on the way upstairs, the whole fucking thing blew. And we just, we just collapsed on everybody inside the lobby. Similar to the first tower coming down, secondary? I don't know about the first one, but I know the second one, was, it was terrible. Then there was a third one, too, after that one. Third explosion after that? Yes, sir. And you were inside. Everybody was inside the building, waiting to go upstairs. And they, they, just, they just let loose. Everything just let loose inside the building. So what, what you tell me is that there was a plane or whatever hit the building, then a secondary explosion. It was like three explosions after that. We came in after the after the fire. We came when the fire was going on already. We was in the staging area inside the building, okay. waiting to go upstairs. The whole and they, they the whole, the whole, the whole, the whole lobby collapsed on the lobby inside. And it was just mayhem after that? No, just man, everybody tried to make their way out. Just trying to help all the brothers get out. A, a lot of people trapped inside. I was sitting in the Brooklyn Navy Yard, across from Brooklyn. We watched the first explosion. As we're watching the building, we saw a black, very large airplane fly right into the second building. It came out of the south, right, right in front of our eyes. Just, it, it, it was so surreal, like a movie set. Second, second, and third explosion. The Lone Gun is a spin-off of the popular series The X-Files. The show first aired in March 2001. The debut of the show involved Brian's father taking his death to uncover a conspiracy to hijack an airline and fly it into the World Trade Center. This episode aired about six months before the actual September 11th attacks. There may be more. Any one of these fucking buildings can blow up. This ain't done yet. This is, this is on top of this. This couldn't be no worse than this. Could be nothing, nothing no more than this. You're in the building trying to help people, and it's exploding on the inside the building. No evidence that explosives were involved in the collapse. Holy crap! The sixth floor of the uh, World Trade Center, we just had an explosion. Can you tell me what happened? What did you see? I saw, I don't know, I saw windows coming out of the building and the ceiling falling on the floor where I was walking. That's when we started heading for the exit. And uh, <coughs> then we got downstairs. We got to the first floor from the second lobby, floor. And all of a sudden it was this big explosion. I don't know if everything just, went just like what you just seen. That's what we went through before we came out of the building. Then when we get out the building, there's another smoke cloud. Okay, better go up to that smoke cloud. <laughs> Mama, just want you to know I'm all right. The ladies that are with me were in the World Trade Center on the on, in the first building and escaped through the lobby where they report they believe there was a bomb in the lobby. We ran down the steps to the lobby. There was no lobby. Everything was uh -huh. torn up. And even the turnstile was burnt and it was sticking up and they just told us to run. My boys ran out of the office. He said one thing, run. Everybody just ran. And we ran down the stairs and told us to come back up the stairs. And we were like, come back up the stairs, are you crazy? So we continued down the stairs. We came outside in the lobby. There was no lobby. The lobby was totally gone. Did you see other people? People, there was a woman there with her face blown off. And as we were coming out, we passed the lobby. There was no lobby. So I believe the, the bomb hit the lobby first. And a couple of seconds in the first plane. Yeah, hi. Um, I am just about uh, between five and ten blocks north of the actual site of where those two towers have come down. We're obviously having a bit of trouble right now maintaining our location because we just heard one more explosion. That's about the fourth one we've heard. The police are telling us they're either car bombs 
or they are uh, simply cars that have overheated so much that they're exploding. But every time one of those happens, there's a flurry of activity. It looks like a ghost town. There are um, federal agents with guns standing outside the federal buildings, clearing people out. The only thing left in the street are people's shoes as they ran out of their shoes to escape the firebombs and the explosions. This area, just prior to that huge explosion that we all heard and felt. Jeremy, can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? Uh, this is Nicholas. Hi, Nicholas. Hi, Nicholas. I'm sorry. Nicholas, you're on live, uh, WB11, Morning News. Can you just tell us what you are seeing and witnessing, and where are you? Uh, I'm in my house right now. I'm looking out the window. After the first explosion, I was just looking at the first tower, and I was just like, wow. You know, I was staring at it for a few minutes, and then I seen the second airplane. It was kind of close up to the building, and it looked like it really did know which way it wanted to go, and it crashed into the second twin tower building. It caused a massive explosion, and I was just like... It was just completely stunning. I'm still hearing like little explosions all around, like around my block, but I don't know what's really going on. But it was what kind of explosions are you hearing? Do you know? Um, just little like, little like dooms. I don't know. Maybe that could be like results from the building, but right. Nicholas, can you just tell us exactly where you're located? Obviously, you're not in. Where are you in the vicinity of the World Trade Center? Uh, well, I'm in the Lower East Side of Manhattan. Rick Sanchez has been there throughout this morning for us. Rick, tell us where you are and what the latest is. Well, I'm in that area, if you're familiar with uh, this area, of uh, where West Broadway and Hudson come together uh, right at Chambers. That would put us about a block and a half away from uh, the site of where the explosion was. That area has just been uh, evacuated because uh, police have found what they describe it as a suspicious device and they fear that it might be something that could lead to uh, another explosion. Obviously, there, there, there's a real sense of caution here on the part of police. I spoke with some police officials moments ago, Chris, and they told me that they have reason to believe that one of the explosions at the World Trade Center, aside from the ones that may have been caused by the impact of the plane with the building, may have been caused by a van that was parked in the building that may have had some type of explosive device in it. So their fear is that there may have been explosive device planted either in the building or in the adjacent area. The chief of safety, as the chief safety of the uh, fire department of New York City, told me that uh, after, shortly after nine o'clock, he had roughly ten alarms, roughly two hundred men in the building trying to effect rescues of some of those civilians who were in there, uh, and that basically he received word of the possibility of a secondary device, that is another bomb going off. Uh, he tried to get his men out as quickly as he could, but he said that there was another explosion which took place. And then an hour after the first hit here, with the first crash that took place, he said, uh, there was another explosion that took place uh, in one of the towers here. Uh, so obviously, he, according to his theory, he thinks that there were actually devices that were planted in the building. One of the secondary devices he thinks that took place after the initial impact was, he thinks, may have been on the plane that crashed into one of the towers. The second device he thinks, he speculates, was probably planted in the building. Uh, so that's what we have been told by um, Albert Turry, who is the uh, chief of safety for the New York City Fire Department. He told me that just moments ago. We've heard reports of secondary explosions after the aircraft impacted, whether in fact there wasn't something else at the base of the towers that in fact were the coup de grace to bring them to the ground. These troubled times, our fifth objective, a new world order can emerge, a new era, freer from the threat of terror, stronger in the pursuit of justice, and more secure in the quest for peace. An era in which the nations of the world, East and West, North and South, can prosper and live in harmony. A hundred generations have searched for this elusive path to peace, while a thousand wars raged across the span of human endeavor. And today that new world is struggling to be born, a world quite different from the one we've known, 
a world where the rule of law supplants the rule of the jungle, a world in which nations recognize the shared responsibility for freedom and justice, a world where the strong respect the rights of the weak. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. What is at stake is more than one small country. It is a big idea, a new world order, where diverse nations are drawn together in common cause to achieve the universal aspirations of mankind, peace and security, freedom and the rule of law. Such is a world worthy of our struggle and worthy of our children's future. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. You know, what, you know what I noticed? Nobody panics when things go according to plan. Even if the plan is horrifying. If tomorrow I tell the press that like a gangbanger will get shot, or a truckload of soldiers will be blowing up, nobody panics. Because it's all part of the plan. But when I say that one little old mare will die, well, then everyone loses their minds.
you're about to see, I didn't know it was the 7 World Trade Center, but I know it now coming back, a four block radius has been cordoned off because fire officials expect that building to collapse. Our cars, debris everywhere. Again, you'll take a look at it. Again, this is not one of the Twin Towers. Mm. This is a building that fell just moments ago. It had been burning for hours. There's Building 7, 47 stories down to the ground. But thank goodness uh, Vince had the... Outside the Pentagon, CNN's military affairs correspondent, Jamie McIntyre. And Jamie, you got very close to where that plane went down. That's right, Judy. A short uh, a, a while ago, I walked right up to next to the building. Was uh, for, uh, Firefighters were still trying to put out the blaze. The, the fire, by the way, is still burning in some parts of the Pentagon. And I took a look at the huge gaping hole that's in this sideway, but from my close-up inspection, uh, there's no evidence of a plane having crashed anywhere near the Pentagon, and there's no evidence of a plane having crashed anywhere near the Pentagon. It looks like there's nothing there except for a hole in the ground. Uh, basically, that's right. The only thing you could see from where we were uh, was a big gouge in the earth and some broken trees. Any large pieces of debris at all? No, there was nothing, nothing that you could distinguish that a plane had crashed there. How big would you say that hole was? Uh, from my estimates, I would guess it was probably about 20 to 15 feet uh, long and probably about 10 feet long or 10 feet wide. What could you see on the ground, if anything, other than dirt and ash? And you couldn't see anything. You could just see dirt, ash, and people walking around, broken trees. Nothing. have seen for years. This is a war we are in, and I am just here to wake up the sheep. I am not here to make friends or convince you. I am only here to try and show you the truth. This war extends to heaven and hell, against principalities, against the devil and his angels. Do you know Jesus, the Lord? It's time to choose who you serve on this earth. Choose who you serve. The Lord Jesus Christ or the beast. Six, six, six. The Minetta testimony launched my investigation into the Pentagon, Shanksville, the hijackers, and many other aspects of 9-11. And if I thought I was a long way down the rabbit hole already, was I way wrong? My belief system would ultimately be shattered, but rebuilt to accommodate my evolving worldview. Back then, however, I was only a few months into my investigation, and I was going through a full scope of emotions, and frankly, having a difficult time handling all of them. Denial, curiosity, fear, disbelief, paranoia, anger, and heartbreak. And I would go through many more. I was still unable to reconcile all the data in front of me. I couldn't see the bigger picture at the time. But like the wind, it can't be seen, yet we know it's there because it leaves evidence of its existence very much like the trail of breadcrumbs I'd been researching over the last few months. But it's not something I could understand in one sitting. It took time. Coping with the flood of emotions took a while. I didn't have anyone guiding me or anyone to talk to about it. I felt like I had no foundation, like the ground was crumbling beneath me. The truth is hidden by several mechanisms, especially the limits of our own preconceived beliefs. I'd been so ignorant and dismissive, but now I wondered what else I'd been fooled about. Over the years, I came to see that we're in a battle of information, a battle of beliefs, or a spiritual battle, if you will. I also came to believe that 9-11 is only one battle in a much larger war, a war I couldn't see yet, but one that I was well on the way to discovering. This is a lot to take in, and we all wake up at our own speed, if at all, which is why I stopped after only looking at the Trade Center portion of the attacks. There is so much more to this, but it's easier to process in smaller chunks. Betsy and I woke up at different speeds. My eyes started opening pretty quickly, but it took Betsy a few years. 
even though we talked about it all the time. It wasn't until she watched early versions of this movie that she began to believe me. I clearly remember the day in June of 2013 when she came voluntarily and shared her own thoughts about her own 9-11 research, something she'd never done before. And I knew by talking to her that her eyes were finally opening too. It probably saved our marriage. Getting past that stumbling block opened the door for us to reconnect. If there's a pit in your stomach, don't be overwhelmed or scared. Whatever's behind all of this has been there for a long time, and I'm sure you've lived, loved, and laughed in that time. And you still will. The shock will wear off. And what will be left is a much better understanding of how the world works, which makes the bad guy's jobs harder. Over time, the discomfort and confusion subsided, and I went back to my life with clarity and new hope for what's ahead. Today I'm able to laugh and be happy and look forward to the future like everyone else. I have all that and I'm more aware of important things happening around me. So if you want to forget everything you've seen, go back to your regular life. Soon you'll forget about all of this. Our defense mechanisms work that way. But if you decide to jump down the rabbit hole, my advice is to seek your own answers, do your own research, and don't let anyone tell you what to believe about anything. Because until you see it for yourself, it'll be hard to ever understand why it's so important to know it exists.